Today's video is about a female group that was naturally capitalizing and could compete with any women group of their day. Their outlandish space age costumes and brass incorporation of rock and roll was a far cry from their early days as a typical 60 girl group. Not to mention their front woman who will become an industry superstar. The centerpiece of today's video is all about Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells, or often known as LaBelle. Before we start, let's be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out on any more uploads. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. The story begins in 1959 with Patricia Passy Hope, a 16-year-old student at John Broughtrum High School, won her first talent show event. After winning, Hope decided to start her singing career with a group called the Ordettes, with classmates Gene Brown, Yvonne Hogan, and Johnny Dawson. The group became quite successful in their hometown, but Dawson soon quit and was replaced by Sandre Tucker. Brown and Hogan left the group to get married in 1961, leaving Hope and Tucker as a duo. Later that year, Hope met manager Bernard Montague, who hired Nona Hendricks and Sarah Dash from the New Jersey group, the Dale Capris. Now this group consisted of Hope, Tucker, Hendricks, and Dash. The group would soon start working with musician Morris Bailey. And the group calendar year began to fill up quickly under Bailey and their manager. Tucker couldn't keep up with the group's strict schedule, so she left the group and was replaced by New Jersey vocalist Sidney Birdsong. Now, this new incarceration of the group traveled the Chitlin Circuit, which helped them develop a following on the East Coast. In 1962, the quartet auditioned for Harold Robinson's label, Newtown Records. Robinson originally rejected the group, not due to him disliking the group's performance. It was mainly due to him disliking Hope's appearance. But as soon as he heard the group sing, he couldn't pass them up and decided to sign them to his label. In 1962, Newtown held a recording studio session with the group. The Starlets, who recorded the song, I Stole My Heart, Robinson was unable to promote the single due to the group being under contract with another label at the time of the recording. So he would improvise by releasing the record but renaming the group the Bluebells. That record ended up becoming very popular, which put Robinson in the bind. So he enlisted the Ordettes and renamed them the Bluebells to give the song a face. When the Starlex manager and label learned what happened, they threatened to sue Newtown and Robinson. Robinson got over this by renaming Hope to Patty and giving her the surname of LaBelle, which means the beautiful in French. He then named the group Patty LaBelle and the Bluebells or Patty LaBelle and her Bluebells. That same year, the group released two singles, I Found a New Love, And tear after tear. In 1963, they released three singles with Who Water, The Catcher Street, and Donna Isle. That same year, they released a debut album called Slay Bells, Jingle Bells, and Blue Bells. In 1964, they released three more singles with You'll Never Walk Alone. One Phone Call. When you want phone call. And 
Danny Boy. The group's popularity was rising rapidly. And once with the group's contract with Newtown ended in 1965, they decided to sign with Atlantic Records in hopes to go mainstream. The group's first single for the Atlantic was All of Nothing. Nothing at all. The group gained popularity that same year by providing backup vocals for Wilson Pickett's first major hit. The group's second album, Over the Rainbow, was released that same year and peaked at number 20 on the Billboard Top R&B Album Charts. Now, due to the popularity they gained for performing on the UK show, Ready Steady Go, at this time, the group began touring exclusively throughout the UK. Now, while in the UK, the group performed with local bands, one of which being Blues Allergy, which featured a teenager named Reggie DeWhite, who went on to become Elton John. In 1966, the group released four more singles, two of which charted, beginning with I'm Still Waiting, Make him see. Yeah, and Take Me For A Little While. But no how you hurt me. In 1967, the group released another single, Always Something There To Remind Me. That next year, the group released a third album, Dreamer. Now, this album didn't chart, and at the same time, Atlantic Records signed Aretha Franklin, and they began to really focus on her, ignoring everyone else. Later that year, Sidney Birdsong unexpectedly left the group to join the Supremes to replace Florence Ballard. Now, at the time, it appeared that the two groups was feuding. As Patty stated on an appearance on Drink Champs in August of 2022, she stated that the Supremes was biting her style. She also recalled Sidney Birdsong's departure from the group to join the Supremes. I had moments with the Supremes at the uh, show. Mm -hmm. uh, we would go to Wal Walmart or Walgreens or one of those cheap stores and buy gold outfits. Mm -hmm. And so the next day, the day we wore them, the next day, the Supremes had on the same gold things. So they were biting your style. They were biting my style. <laughs> no, for real. I mean, biting big. I said, girl, we ain't got no money. It's the only outfit we have. And so we both have on the same outfits, but it was after they saw ours, somebody mm -hmm. wanted to buy it. Oh, for, to join the Supremes? She left us to go with she the Supremes. She jumped oh. shit big time. Wow. Benedict I Arnold. forgot to tell that story. <laughs> oh. Okay, so the thing was, after it all settled in my bones, I said, thank God she's making more money with them than she was with me. So I was, it was a blessing for her, but do it the right freaking way. Right. And Diane, don't come stealing my chicks in the night. Right. So she stole Cindy Bird's song from me. LaBelle said in a recent appearance on the Jennifer Hudson show on February 8th, 2023, that her and Ross never had an issue despite the evidence of her throwing shots at Diana Ross. Is that Diana? That's oh, that's Diana yeah. Ross and Patti LaBelle. Yes, it is. And we were doing a special uh, with, I think we were doing We Are Family, uh, that song by Sister Sledge. Uh -huh. And people think that we had something against each other, mm -hmm. but we really never did. It was just the way people perceive certain right. things. But that's my dog. Yes. Okay? Yes. Hey. We love Miss Diana Ross. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Was some competition back in those days about clothes and who would wear something first and who would look the best in it. Patty LaBelle and Blue, Blue Bells were unique because we didn't really wear gowns. We wore sort of little lacy learner shop dresses, you know, that were real classy. And, you know, when you didn't have a lot of money, but we still knew what to buy to make it seem as if it was a lot of money. What kind of art do you have? Diana Ross. Oh, that little heifer would come in there and see what we were wearing. And they would go out and find the same outfit. I think we got them from Woolworths. I don't know where we got these stretch gold lame suits. But before we went out, for some reason, we were going on after the Supremes, which didn't make sense to me because they were the big stars. But we went on after them, and of course, we only had that one gold outfit. And they had worn theirs already, so it looked like we were copying off of them. I wanted to pimp slap her, you know, because it was like, why would you go out in something that you know we, we're going to wear and that's the only outfit we have? I want to beat her up. 
When Birdsong left the group, they called on a familiar face, which was Sandra Tucker, who came to fill in. Now, Tucker maintained her career after the group's tour, eventually replacing Birdsong and the Supremes, while the rest of the group remained it as a trio. Heavy rock and glitter soul came to dominate Atlantic, and the trio didn't match the label's approach. This, that was dismissed. The group's long-term manager also quit on them to focus on other successful acts such as the Delphonics. The group would take a step back and enlist in the help of a familiar face, Vicky Rickham, who had previously booked them for their first gig in the UK. Rickham encouraged the group to relocate to London and modify their appearance and sound, advising them to ditch everything and just simply go by the name LaBelle. The trio accept this advice and they abandon the wigs, skirts, and earthly appearance in favor of afros and jeans. In New York, the trio debuted this new look while back in the hoop. Following their appearance, they negotiated a deal with Track Records. The group's fourth album was simply titled La Belle and was released in 1971. That following year, they released a fifth album titled Moon Shadow that peaked at number 42 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. Now, despite not being commercially successful, these two albums are critically praised and established the group as a progressive soul group. Around 1973 and 1974, LaBelle modified it to act again, this time to stand out. They began to perform in space suits, feathers, and stub costumes. The group's contract with Track expired in 1973, and they released a one off album with RCA Records called Pressure Cooking. In 1974, the group inked a deal with Epic Records where they released another album titled Nightbirds that peaked at number 7 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 4 on the Billboard Top RB Albums charts. This album also sold over 1 million copies, earning them a gold certification. This album produced two big singles with Lady Marmalade. Hello, hey Joe. You wanna give it a go? Mm -hmm. Gitchy, gitchy, yeah, yeah. And What Can I Do For You? In 1975, they released another album titled Phoenix that peaked at number 44 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 10 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. Now, this album provided us with two hit singles, Messing With My Mind, and For As Long As We Felt Like Going. The following year, they released another album titled The Million that peaked at number 94 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 21 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. Now, there was two big singles from this album titled Get You Somebody New and Isn't It a Shame. Now, despite receiving critical praise, these two albums did not achieve the same level of popularity as the Nightbirds album. By 1976, tensions was rising high as the group struggled for success. Each member had their own unique vision for the group. Patty desired more soul music, while Hendrix desired more rock, and Dash desired more disco. On December 3rd, 1976, during a concert in Baltimore, Hendrix strode off the stage into the audience at the start of the song, Can I Speak to You Before You Go to Hollywood? The group's manager was able to get her to go backstage, but once she got there, she allegedly locked herself in her dressing room and began to bang her head against the wall until it bled. Hendrix was removed by restraints, and Patty advised the group that they should part ways and go on their own for the sake of the member's safety and to preserve their friendships. They all agreed and the group broke up at the end of 1976 after 14 years together. Until 1991, Hendrix has three Billboard Top Charted albums 
with her self-entitled album, which peaked at number 83 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 25 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. The Heart of Defense that peaked at 167 on the Billboard 200 charts and Female Trouble that peaked at number 96 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 30 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. Hendrix's most popular singles was Keep It Confidential, And watch her cry. Dad's solo career was quite successful, despite the fact that she never had a charted single or album. She got well known for her natural skill by providing backup vocals for the Rolling Stones and Keith Richards' band, Expensive Winos. While Patty became an international superstar with hits like New Attitude, Stir It Up, Walking on a wire, running out of time, no room. and On My Own. She received a lot of attention for her songs being featured on movies, most notably Beverly Hills Cops, also performing at the 1995 Super Bowl halftime show. During her career between the years of 1976 and 1991, LaBelle accumulated five gold records and two platinum albums. The trio reunited on the song Release Yourself for Patty's Grammy winning album Burning in 1991. The next year, they rejoined on stage at the Apollo Theater. Four years later, they rejoined on the dance hit Turn It Out for the film Two Wong Fu Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar in 1999. In 1999, all four members of the Bluebells reunited to accept a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Rhythm and Blues Foundation. The trio reunited in 2006 for the Hendrix pen song, Dear Rosa. They reunited two years later for the album, Back to Now. Now this album peaked at number 45 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 9 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. This was their first album as a group in 32 years. Trio shortly embarked on a tour which was lasting through 2009 and they occasionally toured together afterwards. On September 18th, 2021, Sarah Dash performed with Patty, and then the world was struck by some tragic news just two days later. Dash sadly passed away on September 20th, 2021, at the age of 76. And as of this recording, her death is still unknown to the general public. Mourning the death of singer Sarah Dash. She co founded the old female group LaBelle along with fellow members Patti LaBelle and Nona Hendrix. The trio was best known for the 1974 hit Lady Marmalade. Now the group disbanded two years later, but Dash continued performing as a solo singer and worked with both Keith Richards and the Rolling Stones. The New Jersey native died on Monday, just two days after performing in Atlantic City with Patti LaBelle. No word yet on her cause of death. Sarah Dash was 76 years old. Many groups like In Vogue and Destiny Child was influenced by LaBelle. LaBelle was also known as the pioneer of the disco movement. In fact, their single Lady Marmalade was the first disco song to ever go mainstream. Now, to me, LaBelle is underrated. I only say that due to the fact when you talk about best female groups of the 60s, most likely, the Bell or the Bluebells is not in everyone's top 10. Me personally, I believe most people will say that LaBelle is not underrated due to the fact of Patti LaBelle's stardom. The fact that she didn't rise to that stardom until she was solo, it helps my case when we talk about the best female groups of the 60s and 70s. Now, before we go, I have a few questions for you all. Do you believe that the Bluebells are an underrated group? Let me know in the comments below. Also, what is your favorite song from the Bluebells?